Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nicolas Mencio. I am a researcher with the, with the Canadian Forest Service. And today I will talk about uh, a, a work that we did back in 2019, uh, 2020. Uh, we did a survey in the province here in the province of Alberta to quantify uh, the socioeconomic benefit of uh, restoration and reclamation. But before I dive into the survey, I have a few slides about the global context and the national context here in Canada. And mostly I will talk about the, the work that we're doing at the CFS and um, because I think that's a, a, an interesting context uh, before I dive into the survey. So anyway, um, <clears throat> Uh, global context, I'm sure many of you are aware of about the, the decades and how restoration is, is important right now. A lot of focus is on restoration at the global scale, which is really good. And uh, I have also uh, uh, attached a few lines from the newly adopted seal forest declaration. Uh, uh, and I'm sure many of you were at this conference uh, in person, I guess, uh, I was not lucky to be there in person, so I gave a presentation at 2.30 a.m. But anyway, so uh, there is more and more uh, a focus on forests on how we should address the issue like collaborative, you know, uh, uh, institutions, stakeholders, industry, NGOs. Uh, uh, there is a big focus on that, on collaboration. Uh, there is also more and more focus on, you know, uh, uh, the multifunctionality of the forest. Uh, and the different issues that we can address with sustainable forest management, carbon, water, energy, uh, and all this is interrelated. Um, also a big focus on restoration. So uh, it was, a, a, it was a, a clear that we need to triple uh, investment in restoration massively at the national, at the, at the global scale by uh, 2030 to achieve and to meet all the different targets. And there's also more and more emphasis on the circular economy uh, and how we can reduce waste and recycle waste and all that. So I, I think that's very important. And, and the work that we're doing at CFS is focusing on that. So yeah, so very quickly here, um, uh, the, the project, it's part of, of our CFS uh, priorities area. So we have five programs focusing on climate change, uh, cumulative effects, uh, uh, pest management, uh, sustainable forest management, and of course, uh, fire mitigation. And, and the work uh, that we did for the survey is uh, clearly attached to the cumulative effects. So basically is to understand, you know, that synergy between uh, uh, anthropogenic disturbances, natural disturbances, uh, the interaction with climate change. So uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, very complex, but we try to tackle uh, many um, uh, many sectors. Like uh, if you if you see here, so this is a, a project that we have a national project focusing on how we can address cumulative effect uh, restoration of working landscape. So we have various objective. Of course, uh, develop ecological baseline is very key when we when we want to address restoration, when we want to develop restoration project. We're looking also at socioeconomic restoration strategy because uh, uh, restoration is expensive. So we want to uh, do cost benefit analysis, looking at the benefit, uh, looking at the jobs. We want also engage with First Nation. That's very important. Uh, this is part of our reconciliation strategy. Uh, we want to develop tools and uh, guidelines to implement restoration and also develop new policy. So the survey is really part of this big project. We have different expertise. Uh, we have different centers involved in this project. Uh, it's a very a national effort. We're focusing on restoration monitoring. Uh, like I said, we're also looking at baseline biodiversity assessment. Uh, we have a full team of researchers looking at the socioeconomics of restoration. And also we want to uh, uh, look at the seed supply chain because this is key in restoration. So we are working with the National Tree Seed 
uh, lab uh, in, in Canada to make sure that we have enough seeds, we have good quality, we have good collection to implement restoration at scale. Um, this project also is uh, very collaborative. So, so far we have uh, more than 50 collaborators across Canada, but also outside of Canada. We work with industry, we work with academia, uh, government, uh, provincial, federal, uh, indigenous communities. And it was key to uh, tackle all the, all the different facets of this project. Uh, without this collaboration, there is no project. And it was also key to leverage uh, fundings. Uh, and I think that's very important to mention that. So that was uh, the big context, the big picture of uh, what we're doing right now, the CFS focusing on restoration. And now I'm gonna talk more uh, specifically about uh, the, um, the survey. That's too bad, okay. So yeah, the, the, the main goal of, of the, this work is to document the socioeconomic benefit of reclamation and restoration activities in the province and also to identify the key organization of key stakeholders involved in the business. Uh, and this is really important because there is a big gap in this area. Uh, we, all, uh, we all work in, in restoration looking at the ecological benefit, uh, uh, but sometimes we don't, we don't have the data, we don't have the expertise to assess uh, uh, the socioeconomic aspect of, of restoration. So I think it's really important to do that. Uh, this survey was also a, a very collaborative work, and thanks to uh, the Society of Ecological Restoration, Alberto Chapter, thanks to the Canadian Land Reclamation Association, and also a big thanks to the Environmental Services Association of Alberta. Without them, there is no way we can develop this, this work, because we were able to access their membership, we were able access to their network, so it was really key to, uh, uh, to develop this work. And um, also, I'm very thankful to Chris Potter and Richard Dixon, who managed the survey. So before here, a little bit of context, uh, uh, before I, I, I dive into the numbers and, and the question, uh, it's really important to talk about uh, the province of Alberta here. And <clears throat> it's, it's a very, very interesting uh, province in terms of, of landscape, in terms of activities. So uh, first, you're probably all aware of that, that is the third largest oil reserve in the world. And, and today, you know, in the news, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's on the news, oil is going up, but it's a big part of the activities here. It's a big part of the, of the landscape dynamic. But also we have a lot of mining, a lot of forestry, a lot of agriculture. It's a very diverse landscapes. And in addition to that, we have also a lot of natural disturbances, fire, insect, flood. Uh, here I'm, I have a picture of the Formac, for, Formac fire, uh, one of the largest fire uh, in, in Canada, almost uh, 600,000 hectares. Uh, so it was, it was a big, big fire. So we have a big human footprint. You can see on the map here on, on the right, and uh, it's, it's uh, it's a busy landscape. But also hear more detailed uh, about, about the landscape. It's a very fragmented landscape. And I think that's the main characteristic of the landscape here in the province. So the reason for that is of course the oil and gas activities. So here in this picture on the left side, you see well pads. So well pads are uh, 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 very distinctive in the landscape because uh, um, most of the oil activities are not um, open peat; they are like uh, in situ. So it's very uh, uh, it's very visible and uh, uh, it's very impactful in the landscape. And in addition to that, we have also seismic line, seismic lines. So here it's it's a very characteristic of, of the landscape here, uh, and it's it's a labyrinth of of, uh, of seismic line in our province. We're talking about one, 1. 1.5 to 1. 1.8 million of kilometers of seismic line in the province. And you can see that on the, um, on the right side. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, those are seismic line are between uh, 10, eight, 
for the oldest one to four meters wide um, uh, uh, linear disturbance in the forest to survey uh, the resources and to access the forest and to bring the equipment and all that. So that's that's very important to to mention that. Um, so now the survey. So here very briefly, um, by the way, uh, it's the presentation today, it's a very, uh, it's a very uh, quick snapshot of the survey, but I have added the full report in the chat. So feel free to, uh, to, uh, to download the report. So we, uh, we use 27 questions among, uh, amongst the, the, the restoration and the reclamation practitioners in the province to assess uh, uh, and to understand uh, uh, various factors like the type of activities. So here we're talking about land use type of disturbance, but also policy, you know, what are the key driver of, of, the, of the sectors? We uh, ask question about human resources, like the number of employees, the FTE and all that. And we also um, uh, ask questions about the finances, just to understand uh, the revenue streams, the expenditures, but also the funding. Um, before we, 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 we send the question, I mean, it was part of the, of the questionnaire, but we really wanted to see uh, the differences between reclamation and restoration, because uh, this is not uh, uh, this is not the same type of activities, and especially in the province, because in the province reclamation is uh, yeah, there is legal obligation regarding reclamation, and there is none for restoration. So that's very important to mention that. So in the province, and that's a very old policy, of course linked to the oil and gas activity. So. Um, the definition is here. So the Environmental Protection and Enhancement Act mandates reclamation of degraded sites to its equivalent land capability. So it's a very important notion here. And, and the definition of the ELC is the ability of the land to support various post-disturbance land use that are similar to pre-disturbance conditions, but not necessarily identical to it. So there is there is some flexibility in terms of how we implement this policy, uh, but that's not, that's not the, the, the goal of the presentation today. So the reclamation activities are clearly defined uh, by, uh, by in the province here. So we're talking mostly about activity to reclaim all the oil and gas activities. Uh, and we're talking about well pipeline or all production sites. We're talking also about the other energy uh, production site like renewables, also telecommunication transmit line. Uh, we're talking also about uh, and, and transport like uh, railways. Uh, we also talking about mining sites, excavation, uh, bore pipe, quarry or pit, but we are not talking about uh, infrastructure decommissioning uh, for this survey because that's another type of activities and, and infrastructure decommissioning, there is no uh, actual impact on the ecosystem or the forest dynamic. We're just removing uh, equipment. We're just removing old buildings and all that. So we didn't uh, uh, look at that in the presentation. So for the restoration site, like I said, there is no legal definition in the province. We are talking about uh, most of the time re revegetation of forest cut blocks. We're talking about uh, sites damaged by forest fire or by insects. Uh, we're also talking about urban forestry or urban naturalization. We're talking a lot about uh, revegetation of seismic lines, but also habitat improvements, terrestrial peatlands or aquatic, and also uh, compensation of wetlands. So we try to uh, subdivide the, the answer of the question for the reclamation and restoration, but not, uh, not uh, at all time, because sometimes there is no differences between the answers, but feel free again to look at the report for more details. So first result uh, here, the profile of respondent. And 
And first, I'd like to say that we received 115 uh, respondents, which is, uh, I think, really good because our initial uh, list uh, of, of, of organization and business was close to 170. So we got a pretty good, uh, a, a pretty good proportion of respondents uh, in, in the survey. Um, <clears throat> So the, the key, uh, key player uh, based on our survey or consultant who is 42.9%, followed by the industries close to 30%, government with uh, 9%. Um, after that, we have service providers uh, under 5%, associations under 5%, uh, product and equipment supplier uh, close to 5% and academia. Uh, also just under 5%. So here we can see that uh, uh, we were able to cap a, a lot of uh, stakeholders uh, involved in, the, in, in, in this work, which is really good, but it's, it's not a surprise. We start to understand that restoration needs a lot of expertise, a lot of uh, different uh, uh, activities to, uh, to be successful. And here that's, that's the clear picture. Uh, and it's really, if we look at consultant industry, it's a really uh, business-driven activities. Uh, and, and you can see here the detail, the different uh, uh, type of activities uh, involve forestry, environment, agriculture, engineering. Um, um, it, it's a, a, a multiple expertise is required to uh, achieve the multiple goal of uh, the restoration. So the next slide, uh, is about the type of uh, disturbed site. So here on the <clears throat> on the, the left side, you see uh, the answers for the total, and on the right side, you see uh, the distinction between reclamation and restoration. But there is no surprise that uh, fifty person of the activity or related to oil and gas activities, uh, well sites, pipelines, oil and sand mines, it's, it's 50% and also another 10% for all uh, oil sand mines. And uh, so uh, here the, the picture is really clear. Um, so I don't know, maybe we don't have time to go through all the different activities, but, um, but uh, it's again, uh, there is a lot of activities, there is a lot of disturbance. So um, this slide is, is, a good, uh, is a good reflection of that. If we look at reclamation uh, more specifically, so no surprise here, reclamation is focusing at 70, 64% uh, or even more if we look at oil, oil open pit. Uh, oil and gas activity are very, very uh, a key driver of the activities. For restoration, um, uh, there is also um, more, um, there is different activities. So the main one is, is revegetation of cut block. Um, the second one is habitat enhancement. And after that, we have wetland mitigation and, um, and seismic line. It's seismic line, surprisingly, is just 8% of all the restoration activity. Uh, so we were uh, expecting more, actually, considering the, the, the sheer size, the sheer uh, as um, scale of the seismic line in the province. Next slide is, um, is related to what we can say the daily activities. So as a business, what is your main occupation when you, when you do a restoration? So the first, uh, uh, the first um, one was planning. Uh, planning is a very important when you do restoration. Uh, you need to be prepared. You need to, you know, uh, when you go on the field, you don't want to waste time, uh, and you need to, uh, 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 to, you know, to organize field work. But also, there is a lot of um, uh, uh, paperwork involved. So planning, project management, all that. It's it's a key activities. Uh, after that, revegetation. It's also a big, uh, and so we always say that. Uh, restoration is more than tree planting, but that's that's uh, here we, we we see that it's it's big in terms of uh, of daily activities. You need to go on the field and do the work. Um, after that, we can see a very similar type of activities like a review application, design, um, managed conduct research, 
that's also uh, an interesting information here that we learned from this survey. Another good information here we see it's about soil handling. Uh, it's it's quite uh, it's quite important because uh, of course when you want to uh, to get out you need to prepare the site. You need to make sure that uh, 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 you have everything in 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 place to uh, to have a successful uh, project. Again, here a lot of information. Um, feel free to 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 go to the report and. Um, and yeah, sorry. Um, um, a funding a research. It's uh, it's it's not a top priority. We see it's. I think it's close. It's less than two percent. Uh, it was also um, uh, interesting to learn that because we we were assuming that uh, researching for funding was uh, was top priority for the for the business, but um, uh, but not really. Uh, here, information about land uses and type of land. Um, so most of the activities in the province are uh, in the forested land, uh, followed by the agricultural lands. Um, so that's, uh, that's uh, interesting information here. Um, we have um, also uh, maybe 5% of restoration happening in residential and, and, and urban land. So that's... Uh, uh, that's also interesting, and we I think we we wanted to uh, to explore that because there is no much information about restoration in a urban setting here in the province and in Canada in general. So uh, we want to explore that at a later stage. Uh, in terms of type of land, so uh, this we most of the activities are happening in a crow land, provincial land, or public land here in Canada, and thirty percent in private land. Uh, I think this is uh, is not uh, is not really important, but anyway. Um, so here, the next slide is about drivers and policy. Uh, what is driving restoration uh, and reclamation in, in 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 the province? So, like I said uh, earlier, um, because uh, reclamation is uh, is legal, there is legal obligation. That's not a surprise, but we see that thirty seven percent of the activities are uh, are linked to the Environmental Protection and Enhancement Act. So uh, that's that's important to consider. So we see the the, the value of policy here. And uh, there is also other act, public public lands act. Uh, two times Water Act. Um, we have also the Space at Risk Act. Uh, we 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 understand that uh, it's they are less important than uh, what's going on in the Environmental Protection and Enhancement Act. Uh, here we have like a standard for CHG developer. Uh, it was also a surprise. Uh, carbon uh, carbon mitigation. It's something that we want to. Uh, uh, to develop more in the province and in, in Canada in general. So that's also uh, interesting to, to see that, uh, that type of, um, of driver here. So now the human resources. So we ask a couple of questions about, about that, but here is just, just one a, a, a quick snapshot of that. So the number of employees um, range from one to 400. And here we're talking um, a business and company doing uh, restoration and reclamation in Canada. And we see that 80% uh, of respondents reported 20 or less employees. So you can see here in the graph that uh, basically uh, uh, the, the, the message here is that uh, that's a small company with uh, uh, a small number of people um, <clears throat> versus few few large company with uh, with um, a lot of um, employee. So the FTE range from less than one to 150. 78 person of respondent had less than 20 FTEs, and a total of employee was more than uh, 2,000 uh, working on reclamation and restoration. But for a total of um, 
1,400 FTE. So uh, what we what we we learn from that is that there is a lot of seasonality. There is a lot of uh, 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 it's a, it's a very cyclical business. Uh, that's one of our key uh, um, um, conclusion here, and we can talk about that later in the presentation. So we also asked a question about indigenous people and, and, and companies because we really want to, 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 to make sure that indigenous people and community have their say in restoration practices uh, and we can use, we can, we can learn from their indigenous knowledge and, and, uh, and all that. So here the, here the question, uh, the, the answer are very uh, uh, variable. So how you engage with them, 24%, it was none of the above. And I think it was, uh, we, we got comment about that. Uh, so when they're not engaging directly with indigenous people, uh, here I added the comment. So training, education, scholarship. Uh, there's a lot of consultation with indigenous people for uh, indigenous knowledge and, and, and all that. There is also a company mentioning that if they want to uh, do business in their land, they need to pay contribution to access their land. And some companies mention also that some of indigenous people are involved at the board level or project level. So there is a, there is a growing um, um, collaboration with indigenous people here in the province. Uh, and I, so that's very important to mention that. Uh, but um, based on the survey, um, based on the survey, we see that we could, we could do more to, uh, uh, to hire indigenous people in the business. Uh, so here about the finance, again, we ask a lot of questions about the finance, but here that the key uh, result. Uh, and here we're talking about revenues. Um, so 50% of the company reported less than 100K, which is not a lot uh, when you run a business. And, and but this, we can see that this is directly related to the small company, small uh, consultant company involved in the business. Uh, close to 25% reported between 100K to 1 million at the revenue. Here, we're talking about annual revenues. Um, about the same reported between 1 million and 100 million. And 2.4% uh, uh, reported over 100 million as a revenue. So we see there is a big range of variability in terms of revenues. And that's uh, an indication that the company, uh, or there's different type of company, different type of expertise. So here uh, we ask them uh, over the last five years, has your uh, revenue change and why? So 35% um, of the companies mentioned fluctuated, 27% mentioned increased, 20% decreased, and 18% uh, remain the same. So there is no clear indication here. And the driver of this change, uh, you can see that on the right side is that the change in priorities of your clients, stakeholders for 22%, 20% um, for the change in government regulation or policy, 20% uh, uh, for uh, the amount of work needed or available in the province, and 18% uh, change and uh, change in your organization. Uh, interestingly, 5% uh, for number of qualified staff available. So uh, again, this is a lot of information here and a, a lot of interesting information. Try to understand the dynamic, the trend in the business. Then uh, we ask about their expenses. Uh, we see similar uh, variability than for the revenue. So 28 person reported less than 100K, uh, 32 person between 100K and 1 million, uh, 36 person between 1 million and 100 million, and 2.4 person over, uh, uh, over 100 of a million. So again, a lot of variability. Okay, 
And the last question, I mean, for the for the presentation for the presentation today, where does the funding come from? So here was very uh, very interesting. Uh, so the industry uh, is providing uh, funding uh, above thirty percent, thirty two percent. The government is next with twenty percent, and uh, the consultant for thirteen percent. There is also uh, some 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 uh, interesting portion coming from non from NGOs, a uh, six person from the academia, a uh, uh, four person from service provider. There is also very generous people doing donation, and uh, there is also a membership. And fifteen percent mentioned that they don't receive money from other. So that was also um, interesting to to follow up with them. So a lot of information. Uh, so here are some uh, recap and trends. So again, that's just a, a, a snapshot of what's going on in the province of Alberta. And uh, even if some company or international or national, we really focus on their activity in the province. So 80% of the respondents uh, clearly identify their activity as reclamation. And so 20% for restoration. Uh, we highlight that there is a lot of people involved in the business, in the sector, uh, with different expertise. Uh, and, and also, uh, uh, we notice, uh, uh, we, 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 we clearly identify that consultant and industry are the key player there. So we we like to say that the, the economy is robust. I mean, the, the reclamation and, restor and restoration economy is robust in, in the province uh, with um, more than uh, 2,000 employees working at least part-time. Uh, we compare that to uh, the forestry sector for the same year in 2019. And uh, so you can see that the forestry sector is hiring uh, more than, uh, than 3,600 people, just to give you an idea. And what we what we understand from from the different results is that this activity and employment are highly seasonal, uh, and it's we can see that intra and inter annual. What I mean by that is that a lot of people we do the work probably in summertime, uh, and uh, and because that's where you can do field work, but it's also very cyclical because it's really related to the oil and gas industry. And as you know, oil and gas industry is up and down. So uh, there is a clear link between um, the, the money uh, available to do uh, restoration and reclamation. And uh, uh, the business, uh, business size are also very variable. Uh, there is a, a clear indication that most of the company are relatively small. Uh, like under 20 employees, a lot of consultants. And for that reason, the revenues and expenditures are also very variable. So a lot of small business, uh, very, very, very few employees versus a few big, large company uh, with many employees. And, and we know that this large company, they're doing restoration, reclamation, but they're also doing other things. So that's just not their main uh, occupation, not, main, not their main or activities. And one of the key driver is the um, Environmental Protection and Enhancement Act. So the next step, the next step for this, for this work, uh, uh, we also receive a very positive feedback from, uh, from the respondents saying that they were waiting for that kind of work because they just want to learn more about the business. They want to learn more about the opportunities to develop their businesses. And 80% uh, of the respondents reported similar or increased workload in the future. So that's encouraging. But of course, it was before COVID. Uh, we also learned that we need to elevate uh, the profile and visibility of, of this sector, but particularly for the province for the restoration, because reclamation is well known in the province, but restoration, it's, it's different. In a, and I think there is an opportunity to focus on that in terms of, of training, practice, funding, and all that. And what we learn also from this work is that there is a big, big opportunity to connect local and provincial practitioner 
to the national and, and international commitments. What I mean by that is that this, these people involved in this business, they're not aware of, of what's going on, you know, all the, all the, all the, for example, the UN decade on restoration, all the CBD uh, target, and they're not aware of that. And that's, uh, that, that's, that's not part of a business, but I think our work is to really to connect these two worlds, the role, the world of the practitioner and the world of the research academia and all that, because there is a lot of that available. There is a lot of expertise available to achieve all the, 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 the benefit of restoration. So there is also opportunity to build capacity, networking, data, expertise, training, funding. Uh, I think uh, the, 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 the reclamation, restoration community in Alberta, in Alberta is, very, uh, is very dynamic and they, they're willing to, to do more. Um, in terms of the survey of the work, it was really a first. So we need to, um, to refine the survey in terms of question, in terms of uh, uh, how we, we present the question as well, how we present that kind of work, just to make sure to have a better, uh, uh, a better audience. I mean, more people willing to answer the question. And we realized that our estimates are probably very, very conservative. It's just an indication here, uh, based on another report uh, done across Canada, we, 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 uh, there is about 400 uh, 400,000 employees working on site assessment and reclamation, which is 20% of the, the environmental workforce in Canada. So uh, I think here the, the, the challenge is also to be very specific about the type of activity, reclamation versus restoration versus remediation versus regeneration. All that is very confusing for uh, uh, for the people working in that area. And we need to uh, be very, very specific with the kind of question that we want to ask. And the next step is also to uh, reevaluate the survey or reevaluate that kind of work in the context of uh, our two billion tree program, which was announced after this survey. So I think we really want to quantify the impact of, of such program to, um, uh, to um, uh, the, the, to, to see the impact of such program for the socioeconomic, is it really interesting to boost the jobs and 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 the and um, the training or not? So that's really what we want to do. But this program just started, so we have another ten years to do that. And I'm gonna stop here. Uh, this is the links for uh, the um, various paper related to that. And uh, yeah, so. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have a couple of questions here that I'm really excited to ask you. And um, for participants, please add your questions into the Q&A because I won't see them if they go into the chat. So I'm gonna start with, um, given that you developed this survey and database, I assume that the government is not collecting these types of data itself, but there probably are data for other sectors like forestry sector or, or tourism. So the question is, in your opinion, should the government be monitoring the restoration economy? And if so, what do you think needs to happen for that to occur? Uh, first, uh, good question. Uh, when you say government, is the the federal government or the provincial government? Or really either? I'm uh, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. But there there is a there is a lot of information, and uh, if we if we talking, I mean, at the province level, if we talking about data. Uh, uh, there is the, a lot of information available from the Orphan Well uh, Association. Uh, it's uh, you can see uh, you can ask them. They have uh, they have uh, a valuable data sheet that they can share with you. So uh, it's um, it's uh, we have a lot of information. You know, uh, when 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 you talk about restoration at the global level, sometimes one of the main gaps is about data. But here in Canada, we have a lot of data. And um, so and, just to clarify, then, are you saying that the government does have data that um, could be usable to characterize um, 
the restoration economy beyond your survey results, because your results were like 100 respondents. So you could have a more powerful assessment by yeah. using already collected data. Yeah, so we, uh, there's the, 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 this organization, uh, um, it's a governmental organization, Eco Canada, and they're doing, and they're, they're, they're profiling sector. Uh, and I think they, uh, they updated the report that they did, that they did in 2013, and it's focusing on site assessment and reclamation activity in Canada. And you have all the information about the type of expertise, the salary, uh, the gender equity, the everything, and it's it's available online. Okay, great. Well, you've now answered uh, the second question. There was two parts. Okay. Um, one is uh, one part you didn't answer is: Do other provinces, territories similarly lack a legal definition of the terms restoration and reclamation? And then the part I think you mostly answered was: And did they similarly conduct economic surveys of their reclamation restoration industries I, I think the definition uh, the definition and the legal definition of reclamation and restoration is a, is a key uh, is a key aspect of restoration uh, I, I mean in the in the restoration uh, and uh, but and there is also different terminology we know all that and I tried to to, to tackle that at the end of the presentation because uh, it, it's uh, for a business or a company, uh, definition doesn't matter really because they want to do their job and they know where, what they're doing. But when we want to gather information, when we want to gather data, that's another uh, challenge for, for us as a researcher. So that's why I think we need to, uh, uh, to connect with them and just to, to understand exactly what they're doing. And, and, and you know, if we give them a a, a, a box, okay, are you, are you thinking more about restoration, about reclamation, about rehabilitation? It's, it's, it's part of the, of the problem, uh, I think. And, um, and again, you know, the, the equivalent land capability, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a big challenge here in the province because, mm -hmm. because basically you, you, even if there is criteria, if there is monitoring, uh, uh, it's not that simple to make sure that you you gonna have the same uh, 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 the same uh, post uh, ecosystem um, condition, mm -hmm. so that's that's the challenge. Yeah, well, I'm seeing a lot of um, comments in the chat asking about if there's similar databases, and you know, it's just add more evidence that there's a lot of need for this kind of information. And in fact, we also have a question that came in from uh, Navaraj, uh, who I assume is in India, because she asked, can you please suggest some suitable, successful models for India? And I'm wondering, I'll just expand that question to say, as you were putting together your survey, did you come across good resources for quantifying the restoration economy outside of North America? Hmm. Um, not really, not really. I know there is there is the, this uh, key uh, publication from Bendor. I mean, two publication done in the U.S. And actually, that's uh, I, I use that as an example. Uh, and and we are uh, here. So we we did another uh, a, a very similar survey in BC, and we're still working on it. And mm -hmm. we want to to expand uh, in Eastern Canada, but I'm I'm not aware of such survey outside of North America. Oh yeah, uh -huh. I'm I'm wrong. Sorry, uh, there is one from Brazil. Ah, uh, I think it was just published um, a, a month or two months ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, Excellent. Yeah. And I've just shared in the chat because I saw a question roll in about uh, how to get information on engaging with IUCN's Commission on uh, Ecosystem Management and specifically the Ecosystem Restoration Thematic Group that hosts the webinar series. So I've posted that and I'll post again the link to our YouTube channel and the website where you can get access to these videos. It usually takes a couple of weeks to get them up, but if you click the little, if you subscribe and click the bell, you will get a notification when the videos post. Okay, back to questions for you. Um, 
Uh, Acacia is asking about CO2 in restoration projects. And that's making me think about whether there's any efforts to capture sort of non-market valuations or voluntary carbon markets and that kind of economic income or benefit of restoration. Well, yeah, um, from, from, the, from what we learned from the, um, the surveys, not uh, uh, is, is, is a very low priority. Mm. Is a very low priority. Uh, I think the carbon price is not really is not high enough to see real value right now, in terms of uh, carbon sequestration. I mean, in Canada. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. So it's not. Um, it's it's okay. not something. But that's something we want to to explore. Uh, but just uh, not related with carbon credit, but with climate change mitigation, with carbon mitigation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Marshall um, is asking, how can restoration projects be designed and implemented to result in catalytic impact on people and nature? Any uh -oh. lessons and experiences from your project and research? That's a big one. Um. Galilee. Yeah, I, I think the key key uh, aspect of restoration project is to to have everyone at the table, and especially in Alberta, when you have different end users with different values and use. So it's to have everyone at the at the table and to engage at the beginning of the project. Yeah, and you get and honestly, you're gonna spend a lot of time. You're gonna spend years <laughs> doing that before you uh, start uh, digging. So uh, we, we, we are starting that in, in the province with Caribou, for example, because Caribou, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's part of the um, uh, SARA, you know, Special at Risk Act. So we need to, to, to restore and rehabilitate Caribou habitat. And we have uh, a discussion table with the industry, with the province, with First Nation, yeah. with land users. So that's, that's key to make sure that uh, uh, you, you, you reach your goal at the end. And that could take years. Craig, on that note, is um, made a comment about the fact that in the U.S. there's a number of regional ecosystem restoration initiatives like Chesapeake Bay and the Gulf Coast and the Great Lakes where, you know, multiple uh, projects and stakeholders have come together in order to create synergies among their work. Is anything happening like that in Alberta? Uh, at this scale, I'm I'm not aware of. I'm not aware. We have we have a, a, a small restoration project uh, at different sites for different reasons, but I'm not aware of such big uh, restoration project. Mm. So yeah. I have a question too, because when you were mentioning the disconnect between global activities or activities. Um, uh, within scientific societies to increase capacity for restoration. You mentioned that they're, they're not reaching the, um, fo the workers on the ground within Alberta. And I'm wondering what you think the most effective ways are to reach those individuals. And also the Society for Ecological Restoration has a professional certification program in restoration. And I'm wondering if you think that would be of interest to employers in Alberta. Yeah, I, I think there is, a, there is, a, yeah, there is a, a lot of opportunity to engage directly with uh, business owner and, 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 and company because you know they're doing the work. They know the challenge. They know the challenge related to the supply chain to the funding and all that. So uh, uh, I, I think we should take the restoration practices maybe outside of the academia world and bring yeah. into the industry world. It's, it's, it's difficult to do that and to learn directly from them, to learn, okay, how you, when, when, when you face a problem, how you, how you, 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 you manage to, to uh, because these people, you know, uh, they're they're spending money. That's their revenue sources. So that's very very important for 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 them. Not I mean as a researcher, 
it's a very yeah. different challenge, right? So yeah. we need to engage with them and 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 make sure they they're willing to to share uh, the insight, to share their uh, their 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 data. But sometimes, you know, when when you're talking with private company, they don't want to share the data. They don't want to share their their revenue sources because there is the competition as well on top of that. So. Um, and, and we, we need, and actually we did that, we did that, we work with them to develop guidelines and, and, and practices, best practices. So mm -hmm. uh, based on the, on the uh, one of the key uh, objectives of the real program, uh, real project was to work with the industry and develop uh, uh, pra best practices and toolkit and all that. And maybe I can add the, the, the link uh, to the presentation later, but we did that with them. So that's very important to have them on board and to learn from them. Mm, interesting. And if you send the link, I can share it in the follow-up email to participants. And I'm just uh, put in the chat also the link to the Society for Ecological Restoration's certification program for restoration practitioners. And um, I think we have just enough time to squeeze in this last question, which Odin says may be tough to answer, but in terms of obligations under legislation, can you put a figure on what the average expenditure per hectare for terrestrial restoration is? And then also whether costs, uh, these expenditures vary between restoration and reclamation? Mm. Uh, the only information I have, it's about the cost of uh, restoration for seismic line. Uh, we're talking about between 10,000 to 30,000 per kilometer, just for your information. So that's a lot of money. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and after that, it's very viable. If we're talking about tiling ponds or all that, that's going way up. Yeah. Yeah, and if you have water, if you have a contaminant in the water, it's 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 a lot, a lot of money. But you, if you want, I can provide the, the there there is a link somewhere with all the cost of doing reclamation and restoration. Fantastic. Well, I found this information really valuable. Um, you know, it's a case study from Alberta, but it's great to know that this kind of information exists. I have looked for it in the past and have come up short, not seen a lot. I did share in the link a study that was done by the government where I live on a specific project. And when I saw those data, I found it so compelling because for every million dollars invested in restoration, it generated 2.5 million of economic activity, meaning we spend a dollar and we get back more than that dollar. And with that kind of story, you know, it really shows the impact on human well-being that restoration can have while we're repairing degraded ecosystems. Yeah. So if others have stories or data to share before you leave, put them in the chat and I will share them with Nick. Um, these webinars are on the third Friday of every month. The next one will be June 17th. And I'm really excited about the topic. It's priority effects and ecological restoration, meaning how much attention do we have to uh, pay to the order of species arrival on a restoration site in terms of getting a desired outcome. And our speaker is Emmanuel Wiedlich, who is newly working with the Ecosystem Restoration Thematic Group as the co-lead. So we'll be excited to welcome her. I hope you all have a great month. Nick, thank you so much for sharing your work with us. Yeah, thank yeah. you for the invitation. Absolutely. Yeah, bye-bye. Have a good day, everyone. Bye-bye.